Paul Polperesny, as I said, needs no introduction. He is one of those people who can uh, talk to a group of money lenders and then go across the street to a convention of tin vendors and be equally home in either place. He has incredible uh, record of accomplishments, and I think that it is uh, uh, a very great privilege to have him as the first speaker on Warbirds in Review for 2008. I welcome you, and I introduce Paul Pobresny, president and a long-time president of EAA, currently chairman of the board, right? Uh, that's right. Uh, thank you very much for your kind remarks. Back in the early days of the organization, our first fly-in in Milwaukee, we were amateur. I was an amateur at a lot of things. I was uh, still uh, in the military. And uh, I asked the airport manager if we could have the use of the airport for our first home-built antique gathering. It was a fine time. We had probably 10, 12 airplanes and some factory-built airplanes. Next morning, I went out to make sure that everything was cleaned up and ready to go. I was the only one there at about 6.30 in the morning picking up garbage and uh, cotton candy that had melted, <laughs> beer cans, and so forth. And I said to myself, that'll be the last time that'll ever happen. I didn't uh, have it's one of those jet planes. <laughs> and uh, when I looked around, I realized that there was no place for people to put their garbage. There was no system set up. And from then on, I told our directors, our small little group of home builders, that uh, from now on, we work as a team and all of our members will be part of keeping everything family clean. And uh, some of the old timers would come around and give me advice and uh, how to build and suggestions. And uh, after our first meeting, January 26, 1953, I found that I'd have to have some sort of communication, a newsletter or something with the members. And uh, Audrey got a new uh, kitchen set and it took the old, uh, or, well, it's old now, uh, get a kitchen table. That was our first uh, desk. I found a used typewriter. I cleaned out our coal bin, went to oil, and that was our first office in our home. For 13 years, uh, uh, the offices of EA were in our home. We saved our money, everyone volunteered, so that we'd have enough money someday to buy some land and build a, fac a facility for the home builds antique and aviation enthusiasts. I don't, I don't want anybody to laugh, but I first met you in Rockford. I'm trying to find a word to describe you, probably persuasive. I couldn't say hello to you, every convention and I'd be volunteering. Now I appreciated your comment about your upbringing. I never, I had never heard that before. And uh, in your statement about how you dealt with Washington. Uh, before I ask my question, I want to say this man gentleman standing here, we wouldn't have, be able to build airplanes. We wouldn't even have this if it wasn't for this man. Uh, thank you. Washington would have had us grounded 30 years ago. But anyway, my question is, given your your beginnings, your upbringing, where did you develop the persuasive nature that you have? Well, I guess if you love people like I do, uh, it's part of my mom's southern. i bringing up and uh, the love of God's given me for everyone. And they, uh, 
behind us is, is obviously a P-51 Mustang D. This one, this one's a little unique because of the tall tail. Why does it have a tall tail, Paul? Now there's a 17 up there. Well, they uh, extended it for a little better directional stability at uh, higher uh, speeds and also when they added the extra canopy to the rear seat it uh, took a little bit of the effectiveness of the vertical uh, fin away and uh, that vertical fin on top there uh, that's the second one it's had okay we won't go into that how, how many well did, wait a minute I, I just, you want to go into that sure, all thought, right yeah uh, it shows that when you have maintenance done on an airplane, something can go wrong, and, and so unrelated. But some years ago, some years ago, uh, Audrey and I were in Lakeland, Florida, and we had a 340, Cessna 340 that I used as a personal airplane in EA uh, work. They wanted me to fly an air show with the Mustang, so I had another pilot fly the airplane down. And the range on this year, you've got six, seven hours of fuel, so you can go nonstop. So I had uh, one of my good friends fly the airplane down, and uh, he lost all radio and navigational use of the uh, equipment on the way down. And I remember him circling the airport trying to make uh, break into the air show part of it and uh, he landed and he told me what the problem was and I couldn't get the radios uh, repaired because they're older radios so uh, after the uh, fly-in uh, we uh, headed for home he was out on my wing about a thousand feet and he had a portable radio and uh, we were sitting there in autopilot and Audrey was dozed off a bit and all of a sudden the airplane lurched and heard the noise and uh, she says what's going on or what's he doing well he ran into this and the tip tank the tip of their vertical fin how it ever missed a prop went through my left wing tank and uh, so it was pretty hairy we were able to get it down in Tallahassee but it shows that the radio situation, he was out there about a thousand feet from it, and the oil temperature went to the peg, and he was concerned and trying to monitor that, and with the oil radiator door open, and with a hat, EA hat on, he didn't, he lost, he drifted over under us, so uh, that was very fortunate that day.